All right, why don't we get going? Um, good afternoon. My name is uh, Pilo Pierce. I'm with Eduporium, and I'd like to welcome Hal Speed. Hal is with Robotical. Uh, he's the head of North America, and he'll be really kind of the main presenter today to give us an update on what's new with Robotical and a focus on Marty, their robot, and uh, particularly using it uh, for STEM activities and coding in uh, K-8. What I did want to do is just take a second. I want to welcome you here today. Um, we're probably going to focus around 45 minutes. We encourage people to either chat or um, send in questions and things like that. We have some Eduporian people online who will forward it over to me and I'll interrupt and talk to Hal and get that question out so we can answer all questions. Uh, we are going to send out to everyone who attends um, and actually anybody who registers to a copy of the slides that are discussed. Um, a pointer to the video and then any other resources or anything like that that's discussed or action items uh, will be in that email. So, um, which is great to hear. And we appreciate you joining today. We know that uh, your time is very, very critical. And for some of you, you know, typical not, you know, not great planning. We understand it is vacation week. So thank you for joining. Um, I just wanted to take a second and uh, indicate who Eduporium is. And Eduporium is a company we're based in uh, Newton, Massachusetts, and our focus is just on working with educators across the country, K through 12, colleges, libraries, after school programs, focused on making sure people are aware of the different innovative STEM educational technology out there, which could include coding robots like Marty, uh, drones, 3D printers, virtual reality and augmented reality esports configurations, you name it, science kits, electronics kits, et cetera. And the big thing that makes us different is we only work with education and we only work with STEM educational technology products. And so we're comfortable talking with you as long as you share your educational vision, um, what works best we feel in different programs. And, and um, we don't offer every product because maybe we, we just, you know, maybe we have a, a view that these other products that we do recommend are better. We do offer an educational discount where possible. And we are also a certified minority business enterprise in a number of states, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and other states. So that is something also to keep in mind. Um, just a sample of some of the products and solutions we have. And with that, I'm going to hand it back. Um, we would encourage questions and stuff like that. Hand it back over to, to Hal uh, for him to kick it off. Thanks so much, Paolo. And Glad everybody is able to make it. Let me uh, share my screen real quick. Yep. And as Paolo said, we, we really want to make this as interactive as we can over a webinar. So we're, we're here for you and want to make sure it's a good use of your time and you're getting your questions answered. So feel free to, to drop any questions into the chat and we'll try to integrate those into the presentation the, the best we can. Um, for many of you, you Robotical may be a, a new company and a new name for you or, or Marty the Robot. Um, turns out we've been around for uh, about six years in Scotland and our genesis was similar to the Khan Academy. So our founder and CEO was a grad student in Scotland studying robotics and his niece and nephew were interested in learning more about robotics. And so he built a kit that they could use to, to learn robotics. And that was in the, the 2015 kind of timeframe. And we, we turned that into a company. So Robotical started in 2016 and we got our initial funding through an Indiegogo campaign for what we call Marty version one, um, which was mainly a kit to help teach robotics and how to, to build and assemble a, a robot. Um, and so that launched in 2017. Uh, then we saw the overwhelming response that we were getting from educators who, who were really drawn to this humanoid form factor. And so started providing more lesson material and teaching resources in the, the 2018 timeframe. And one of the pieces of feedback we were getting was that um, for the younger kids, assembling the robot was just too complex for K-5 and elementary school age kids. So we redesigned Marty for what we now call Marty V2, uh, funded that partly through a Kickstarter campaign. And then a couple of years ago, that started shipping 
uh, Eduporium has been one of our, our longest partners. Uh, they even included some of a reseller for Marty V1, um, but now continue to, to be a great partner with Marty V2. And as Robotical, we've had a strong push into North America starting last year. I came on board. I was previously with the, the Microbit Educational Foundation, um, which is a, a nonprofit with physical computing. It's another product that Eduporium carries. And, and so I'm just really <clears throat> passionate about making sure kids have access to learning computing and computational thinking and STEM uh, at as early an age as possible. And Marty really does that and, and engages young learners. And that's really the, the mission that we have here at Robotical is to not ignite that passion early on in the hopes that more and more students will be drawn to the, the STEM fields as they go through their educational journey, um, K-12 and, and potentially even through higher ed. So I wanted to take a minute and share a, a brief video with some teacher feedback and, and show you how the kids are enjoying Marty in the classroom. And then we'll dig in a little bit more about the hardware and the software and the lesson plans. The minute I brought it out of the box to show the kids, their reaction was incredible. They were cheering, they loved it. They thought, wow, look at that robot. What can it do? Can I play with it? I don't think they had ever seen a robot like it before. For them to be able to put in code to see how Marty would react instead of having just a sprite on the screen, it gave them instant feedback if their code worked or not. I've got pupils aged from 7 to 13 and most of the technology they're using arrives as a sealed unit. Their computers, their phones, they never see inside them. So this has been a really good learning experience. I knew a bit of coding already, so to use it in like a practical sense and then to be put against other people who knew some experience was quite nice because I was able to see like where I was at in terms of skills and I thought it was really fun. Super easy to get started. The app is very user friendly. Um, younger pupils really enjoy getting Marty to interact one unit with the other, so they like to hug, they like to play football. The older pupils want to teach them to dance. It got them using different skills, particularly in math, something that you don't always think about in that they were estimating. So they'd plug in a number for how long they wanted him to dance, so time, or how many steps they wanted him to take, and they would estimate how far he would move. The kids absolutely loved having a chance to get to uh, use it, and it exceeded every expectation I had as a robot. It's loads and loads of fun, and even if later on you can buy Marty, I'm gonna go and get one and just have fun at home with him. So that was a mismatch of uh, Marty V1 and Marty V2, as well as a Canadian teacher, a US teacher, and uh, one teacher from the UK, which, which you probably noticed talks about pupils, um, <laughs> where we have, tend to have students here in North America. Um, but it, it's a great testimonial to, to just how engaging this is for the, the young learners, uh, especially the, the littles. Um, mainly because of the, the social emotional engagement that the students can have. Um, we often hear that students will respond, oh, this is a real robot, because it's what they think or expect a robot to look like. It, it looks like them. It has arms, it has eyes, it has legs, and it can make different expressions and sounds and walk like a human. And, and so having that connection to make the learning fun and exciting, as well as easy for the educator, is really what we're trying to do. Um, it does have a, a unique walking mechanism, and that is actually part of what our, our founders' uh, graduate studies was about, and, and one of the reasons why it can perform, um, like kicking a soccer ball and things like that. Uh, we use high quality motors with uh, metal gears as opposed to plastic gears that you might see in some less expensive motors, um, which helps in ensure our, our quality and reliability. Um, we do provide a, a two year warranty and we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, it has 
a number of built-in sensors, including an accelerometer and tilt sensor in the head. And then on Marty's feet, um, uh, when I stop sharing, you'll be able to see that a little closer. There's also additional hardware sensors, and I'll demonstrate both of those today. One is a, a color sensor, and one is a, an IR sensor that can determine the proximity of objects. Another great feature is that it has a removable battery. So this is really helpful for educators in the classroom when they don't have to worry so much about, did I remember to charge the robot last night? So Marty can be charged over USB, um, but the five pack for the classroom comes with a docking cradle that charges uh, batteries and there's five extra batteries that comes in that five pack. Um, and like I said, there's there's also a, a speaker on board. Any questions so far, Paulo? No, no questions. Okay, we're on a roll. So we're keep rocking and rolling. Uh, one of the the most significant advantages for Marty is the the breadth of coding languages and the way Marty can be programmed. Uh, we start because uh, this can go down to kindergarten or even pre kindergarten using unplugged lessons and coding cards. So there's a color sensor built into Marty's left foot. And Marty will then sense the, the color of these cards. There's five different colors for forward, backwards, left, right, and stop and dance. And so students can start to build very basic sequences of movement, some troubleshooting, debugging, um, so right out of the box, no device even required. They're getting those quick wins. We're building that confidence um, and, and having them lean in and, and want to learn more. Then we step up from there into our app. It, it is a, an Apple or Android app. So it works on iPads, Android tablets. And then it also works on Chromebooks that have access to the Play Store. So that's typically newer Chromebooks, but your, your mileage may vary at your district level. If the IT department gives you access to the Play Store or allows you to install Android apps onto your Chromebook. Um, that app includes all three of those middle methods of the controller and sequencer, Marty Blocks Jr. and Marty Blocks. And I'll, I'll show you each of those here in a second. And then for more advanced learners in middle school and upwards, we also support Python with a uh, Marty Pi package or, or library that you install on your local host um, and, and then can make those library calls in Python. Um, and in that case, you connect over Wi Fi. So it's a little bit more sophisticated connection methodology, but it goes along with the uh, text based programming of Python. And then we are currently working on a version of Marty Blocks that will run in a browser and be based on Bluetooth. So stay tuned for that. Uh, so that will help schools that have Chromebooks that may not have access to the Play Store. Uh, this would be an easy way to, to just go in, in a Chrome browser on a Chromebook and then go to Marty Blocks directly. Hey, hey Hal, two, two quick questions on this. Uh... How many, you know, how many robots can you have in a classroom at one time, um, in your opinion? Uh, technically, there's there's really not that much of a limit, um, so you could go one to one, uh, but we typically see a, a two to three to one ratio, so okay. one robot for every three students or so. Okay, and and how would you if you had say you had. 24 kids in the classroom. So that would be like eight or nine robots. How do you, how do the kids know which robot, you know, to connect with, with Bluetooth? How does that sound? Yes. And we've, I'm definitely going to show that uh, here okay. in just a second, because it, it is an area that we've invested quite a bit in. And hopefully you'll be pleasantly pleased and or pleasantly surprised and pleased <laughs> uh, of how seamless the pairing process is. Um, there's a, a little bit of a two-factor authentication using a, a color code on the back of Marty, um, but I'll, I'll definitely demonstrate that Great. Here in, in just a second. All right, and then one last question: Are there any other languages or anything else that's going to, you know, be coming, you know, short term or long term? 
No, I don't think so. No. Okay. Um, and we've cool. we've had some discussions about JavaScript, uh, but nothing on the roadmap around that right now. So right now it's blocks and Python would be the, the besides the unplugged version and the controller and sequence. Yeah, so actually the, the sequencer and, and I'm cheating here a little bit, the, the screenshot on this slide is what it's going to look like. I'll, I'll show you the version that's currently in the app right now is a little more basic. Yeah. Um, but the, the sequencer is really what's new. We um, a few months ago just had a basic remote control and what we were noticing is that students needed more of a bridge between that basic control functionality and then into Marty Blocks Jr. with the picture-based, icon-based coding. And so we've introduced a, a very simple linear sequencing kind of approach, not as complex as Scratch Jr. style, um, but starting to introduce the step one, two, three kind of sequencing to better bridge through the unplugged controller into to Marty Box Jr. Good. And then one last question: Does Marty have any uh, verbal communications? Not human voice verbal, just right. um, chirps and sounds. Okay. And then tied to that, is any of the documentation is a multiple language? You know, for people who might have English as a second language, is there? Yes, the documentation and stuff like that. Yeah, so Marty Blocks especially is is based on the the Scratch open source project at MIT. Yep. And so the the MIT translations that are in Scratch get pulled into Marty Blocks um, for the standard blocks, and then we go ahead and, and translate the Marty specific blocks into other languages. And so we support Spanish and I think maybe French. Um, but but that's something that we could look into more if there yeah, is a, um, a specific language requirement. Yeah, and I'll tie back with you at the end, and you know, yeah. and we'll just tie out if there's other languages so we can get back to everybody. All yeah, right, at the um, moment, all of the the teaching and learning resources though are in English. We've not translated any of those. Okay, thank you. But really good questions. Keep them coming. I, I, this is just showing kind of our suggestions. Um, of course, you know your students better than we do. So a, as you progress along the different grades, showing the, the different types of program method methodologies that we've got lessons for. And then here's a quick overview. I'm going to show you a lot more about this when we go to the learning portal online. But to give you an idea of what the, the core learning concepts are that our lessons support, and again, trying to provide that scaffolding approach as we go across the grade bands from pre-K up through eighth grade. And with that, I'm going to stop sharing. And hopefully, if you've got your computer set to speaker view, I should become more full screen. Um, and so you'll see me, you'll see Marty the robot, you'll, you'll see a surface here, and then I've got my, my iPad over here to the right. And so what I'm going to do first is demonstrate just how quickly you can get active and going with Marty out of the box. So um, I mentioned the the removable battery. So that's what the, the battery looks like. Um, there's just two finger tabs here on the back of Marty's head. You push them in, the head opens, and you can see inside. If you want to explain to the older students a little bit about the, the servos and the electronics, some of that is visible and accessible. So then I just snap the, the battery into the back. I'm going to go ahead and put Marty's head back on, and then turn Marty on. There's a green LED on the back that then turns on. And what we're going to do first is the unplugged activities. And so to do that, I'm going to put Marty into unplugged mode. And uh, he's going to make a little sound. I don't know if you'll pick it up on the microphone, but he'll say, unplugged. <laughs> Here we go. 
So now the robot is in unplugged mode and it's not using my computer, not using the tablet. The color sensor on Marty's left foot now has illuminated because it's looking for colors. Now, there's nothing special about these cards. It's just looking for the colors. So this could be construction paper. It could be carpeting. Um, turns out it could be the tablecloth at a trade show. <laughs> I learned that the hard way because um, I had a yellow tablecloth and Marty goes backwards for yellow. Um, and so Marty just keep, kept walking backwards when I wasn't looking. Anyway, so Marty's in unplugged mode. I've got a green card here and a red card. So Marty will read the green, should move forward. When the robot reaches the red card, we'll stop and dance. So here we go. So just like that, we're coding. Right. All we did was put the battery in, press a button, and put Marty on some cards. And already the kids are getting that quick win. Confidence is going up. The educator's like, oh, I'm so great. glad I got Marty. And this is a great tool. Um, you can start to teach cardinal directions as well. So left, right, forward, and backwards. Um, you can create your own cards, but then the, the kids and the, they come with packs of cards that you could string out together. So now let's, any questions about Unplugged before I move into the app? Doesn't seem to be any yet, Hal. Okay, so I'm gonna take Marty out of Unplugged mode. And he makes a little chirp sound. So now he's out of Unplugged mode. And let me share my iPad screen. Okay, can everybody see the iPad? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. So this is to answer the question and demonstrate how we connect over Bluetooth and pair Marty over Bluetooth. So the version that you may be seeing on the screen says disconnect from Marty. On my iPad, it actually says connect. I think there's a slight lag in the... Here, let me see if I can get rid of that. Okay, my screen sharing app is just a slight laggy. Um, so I hit connect in the upper left corner and then the app goes out and looks for every Bluetooth Marty that is turned on. In my case, I only have one Marty, but if I was in a classroom setting and I had the, the, the 10 robots that we were talking about before and, and they were all turned on, they would, all show up on this list from top to bottom. Each individual robot can be named electronically. So, so I've called mine Marty underscore Hal, but you can go in through the app and, and assign each robot a name electronically as well as um, they also come with a sticker sheet. And one of the stickers says, hello, my name is, and you could put physical names on the outside of them. But e let's say we have a list of 10 here. I think this one is Marty Howe, but I'm not sure. So I'm gonna select Marty Howe. It goes out and uh, shoot, my screen sharing is not working. Hmm. So on my iPad screen, I have three LED colors that you're not seeing for some reason. Let me stop sharing a second. Just to prove it to you, here's what it looks like on the iPad. Whoops, not on the iPad, connect to Marty. So once I select and touch the Marty, 
it shows three LEDs. In this case, it's red, blue, red. And then on the back of Marty, uh, camera may not like those, but it's red, blue, red. Cool. So the kids are learning basic patterns and also now the, the ability to know, okay, yes, I thought this was my robot. Now I've confirmed it kind of with two-factor authentication. And so I'll hit yes to confirm. And now the blue LED on the back of Marty has illuminated to show that we have a successful Bluetooth connection with the blue LED. And let me show you the controller. This is not as fancy as the one I showed you on the slide that showed the more the, the ray tra race track version. Uh, this is the, the current version, but we, we are making the enhancements that will be out really soon. Um, there's a toggle between what we call remote control mode, which is what it initially comes in. So if I get Marty ready and just single tap the green arrow, Marty's taken one step forward. If I single tap the yellow arrow, Marty's taking some steps backwards. I can get Marty to wiggle his eyes or to wave to you guys. So that's nice. And it's what you would expect a remote controller to do. Up in the top, there's this toggle that I'm going to switch over and convert now into a sequence mode. And at the very top where it says, selected movements, those actions aren't going to operate until I click the green flag. So if I wanted to do forward, forward, dance, wave, that sequence of three, and again, sorry, the, the wave is showing up on my tablet, but it's not on my screen share. Um, so I've got those four icons at the top. Maybe I'll cheat and put that. Okay, now you can see the wave. And when I press the green flag, Marty will then execute that short sequence. And so we're, we're making the transition now out of just a direct response remote control to, oh, I can tap a few different things and start to quote, run a program, which then sets us up to transition into Marty Box Jr. So if you've seen Scratch Jr. before, th this will look very, very similar, um, except instead of kind of a front of stage view that you would have for the sprites, we've got a, a tops down view. So you see Marty's head and then we have different surfaces uh, some that are already built into the app, but also the kids can add um, their own surfaces or you can put mazes or scavenger hunts or things like that um, as user loadable surfaces. I, I've just picked the, the Mars surface in this case. Um, so yellow is the, the green start flag, just like in Scratch Junior. Blue are, are the movements. So I'm going to pick this, get Marty ready. Here's our forward block. But unlike in the sequencer where it was always just one step forward, I now can put in how many steps I want Marty to take. So I'll, I'll say three in this case. Um, there was questions about the sounds. So in Marty Blocks Jr., there's a library of, of six sounds. Um, that one's kind of a, a whistle sound. There's a little bit of control logic for, for simple looping, stop and delay. So let me just put in a, a short delay here, maybe like four seconds. Um, and then we always like to see Marty dance. 
and then we'll end our program there. So this is for pre-readers that um, may not be able to read the, the words in Marty Black's or Scratch yet. Um, the, the icons are somewhat self-explanatory and, and grouped by the category. And so now I'll hit the green flag and I'm gonna keep sharing if that's okay just to avoid popping in and out. So the green flag, Marty gets ready, takes three steps forward, plays a little chirp, waits for a little bit, and then dances again. And then that's the end of our program. If, if we wanted to, to loop that, we could put the loop here. I've got a really small setup, so pretty soon Marty would fall off the, the table. Um, but there are ways to fix that, and we're, we'll do that in our next demo. Any questions uh, about Marty Bucks Jr.? Currently Howler, and no questions. So you're great on the spot. So the last one we're going to show in the app then is Marty Bucks. And for this, Actually, before we show the app, let me show you the teaching and learning portal. Everybody can see the learning portal, right? Screen shared. Yep, we see that. And it's actually very critical. It's good that you're doing this. Thank you. Great. Um, and I've got some static images in the slides. So e even when you receive the slide presentation later, There'll be pointers to help you remember of, oh, this was a lesson, this is the portal, um, this is the alignment to the standards, et cetera, et cetera. So in here, we have lots of different filters that we can look at the, the lessons based on. Uh, first and foremost is the version of Marty. So we picked version two, um, which is what has the majority of the lessons. And then, one of our most important things is education standards. So when you select USA, it automatically selects CSTA as the, the standard that gets filtered on. And each of the, the different grade bands then are, are part of that. And you can even filter down more on the CSTA standards. But we have additional standards with NGSS. Um, in Texas, we have some aligned to the TEKS. In Georgia, we have some aligned to the, the GSEs, the Georgia Standards of Excellence. And uh, there's a few common core math lessons as well. So if, if you're looking for lesson alignment, you can go in there and, and start that. If you're looking for other concepts, and topics, uh, you can filter based on that. The environments are, are the different coding modalities that I was showing. So if you want unplugged lessons, you can select unplugged. If you want Marty Box Junior lessons, you can select that, Python, et cetera. Um, challenge level, kind of beginner, intermediate, advanced, and then an area that we call add-ons, which just means all of the extra sensors with Marty. Um, and that does include, there are a couple of collaborative lessons with the Raspberry Pi and, and with Microbit. Um, but what I wanted to do is show you the IR sensor that comes in Marty's right foot. And so there's a lesson here, what's in Marty's way? So I'm going to open that, and that'll give you an idea of, and this format is typical of all of our lessons. Uh, on the, the left-hand side, you've got the different navigation. Uh, let me see if I can make that a little bit bigger. There we go. So on the, the left-hand side, we've got the, the navigation within the lesson itself, the overview, Learning objectives, the warm up, and in, in this case, 
we're going to use the IR sensor. So we're relating it to real world activities um, like a, a blind walking stick that a seeing impaired person might have or maybe some type of, of IR sensor on a, a door or automatic sensor to, to trigger something. Um, then we go into a little bit of an explanation. And this is all intended to be teacher facing, of course. Uh, explanation about what IR is and, and how that sensor works and transmits the beam and then waits for a reflection and receives that beam. And for Marty, the IR sensor is a Boolean expression. So it's either positive or negative, true or false. So did I receive a reflection or did I not? Um, and, and we've calibrated the distance to, to where it's close enough to, to be able to determine that. Um, so you can explain what Booleans are, practice cooldown, and then here's the additional alignments to um, various curricula, including in this case, the CSTA. And then on the right-hand side, are the teacher guide, the student worksheets or workbooks, as well as a PowerPoint presentation that you could use during instruction time in the class. So each of the lessons, and there's over 50 hours worth of lesson content, um, has this level of information and, and preparation. So they're, they're really ready to go out of the box. So now, I'd like to go back to the app. So we're, we're doing this IR sensor lesson. Um, I'm in Marty blocks. And so you quickly will see you have all of the, the regular blocks like you would in a, in a regular kind of scratch, MIT scratch. But all of these extra green blocks are unique to Marty. And so I've gone ahead and just kind of pre-built this for time. And what the program is going to do, if we were more interactive, I would ask the students what the program would do. But you guys are smart, so I'm pretty sure you can figure it out. Uh, we're going to go into a, a forever loop. And Marty is going to take a step forward. And as long as there's not an obstacle, so as long as the right foot doesn't get triggered, Marty's going to continue to walk forward if there is an obstacle in front of the IR sensor and it's close enough. And uh, sometimes Marty will kick the obstacle depending on the stride that he's in. <laughs> um, then once it senses that it's close to the obstacle, we'll play a sound, we'll stop, take four steps backwards, and then turn three steps and then kick out of the if then back into the infinite loop. Um, so it's a little bit like my uh, robot vacuum cleaner at home. When it bumps into a wall, it backs up, turns a little bit, and goes forward. If it hits another obstacle, backs up, turns a little bit, goes forward again. So kind of emulating that kind of behavior in, in a relatively small number of blocks. So let me get Marty set up here. And I'm going to stop sharing in the hopes that you'll be able to see my screen a little bit more detail. So I should be more full screen with Marty. And then I've just got a, a little white box here. And I'm going to click the green flag in our Marty box program. And Marty should start walking. So Marty's going forward, no obstacle, no obstacle, no obstacle. Oop. Came to the box, takes a few steps back, and then starts turning. And then we'll start moving forward again to avoid the obstacle. And if I don't stop it in the app, Marty will keep walking. <laughs> um, that's cool Hal. Nice. well done well done You're yeah so it's, it's always great when a demo works on a live webinar <laughs> um 
So that I think was all I was going to show in the app. So let me, oh, I'm not in the app anymore. So let me go back to the presentation. Share screen, share, okay. So now we're back in the presentation. And this is, like I said, more as a, a leave behind for you after the, the webinar. You can go back and, and look at these so you don't have to take notes. Um, this is the, the standards alignment for the, the US. Here's just a, a pointer back to the, the learning portal and kind of what that looks like and the different lessons and lesson packs and activities. We do also have our code activities that are on there. Um, sample lesson that we discussed, and here's kind of the, the breakdown of each of the lessons. Um, they include the lesson plan, the teacher guide, curriculum links, any additional content like the, the video of the, the man with the walking stick, and then presentation slides that you can use. Cool. Hey, Hal, one quick question came up just before you, you go to this last page, um, or whatever pages you have. Um, is there anything you can do with the hands? Yes, so the the hands will rotate up and down. Yeah. There, there's also the ability to print a 3D loop that will hold um, in the in the box. Marty comes with a ping pong ball. Yep. Um, that doubles as a soccer ball, but you can 3D print a little loop that Marty can hold and, and throw. There are also a, an additional gripper sensor that you could purchase that would plug in. I mean, that would be definitely for older kids, yep. but it does have the ability not only to articulate the arm up and down, but with that gripper piece, be able to open it and shut the, the gripper to be able to so, grab up. So in summary though, with the base functionality with the blocks type stuff, they would be able to program the hands a little bit to move them around? Yes, the, the hand will, will move up and down even in the controller, the sequencer, Marty Blocks Jr. and Marty Blocks all have the ability to control the arms. Perfect, okay, thank you. Um, and I'm wondering if Marty Blocks has any more sophisticated doesn't look like just the the gripper okay. all right so we're a little over time so I'll kind of blow through these last slides uh, we'll send out the this white paper uh, edge of will send that to you that explains some of the benefits of humanoid form factor um, in, in teaching and learning and, and especially uh, students with special needs and on the autism spectrum there's some great uh, research that's been done around that. And then here's an example of what comes in the class pack of five. So each class pack comes with five robots, 10 batteries, and, and the robots have the color sensor and the IR sensor already on the feet, the, the sticker sheet that I showed earlier. And then we, we have a new zipper storage case that has a handle, a little bit like a lunchbox. So uh, it's easier to store in the classroom or if you need to share between classes or check out at the library, it's got an easy way to transport it. 10 batteries, so two batteries for each robot, the charging cradle. Um, here's what that looks like, if you can see it on the screen. Um, so the color cards and then the two-year warranty. And so it, Prices start at twenty two twenty five for a single five pack, and depending on the volume, the the price per five pack goes down as you buy ten, fifteen, or thirty robots. You can find all those prices on the Edgeporium website. And if you need any help funding, we, we have a, a grants page that gives you some pointers and suggestions uh, about how to do that, and we'll include that link also in the follow up. So that's all I had prepared. Great. Anybody have um, 
any additional questions before we final, you know, close up here? Any other questions? I know um, it looks like all the questions we had did seem to get answered. I know how you've got a full package there of different things that, um, you know, may round out what they may be looking to, you know, answer from the educational portal to the different resources and stuff like that. Um, a question came up, will a recording be available as well, the slide deck? And the answer is yes. Um, there'll be a full recording. It'll come out um, when we send the email out. You'll have a copy of the recording and there'll be a blog that'll have a copy of the slides, any resources and stuff like that. So, and we're also here for any other additional questions and stuff like that. So, um, so any other, oh, there is one that came yeah, up. Yeah, Jacqueline. Yeah. Jacqueline's got a Marty. <laughs> I ah. recognize her name. Um, so either her question was about, is it go into the computer lab or into the classroom? Definitely could be both. Um, and I would include libraries as well, because many times the robot lab or the makerspace is in the library in the elementary school. So it really just depends on, on your particular school. Um, but it, it can be used in, in all three individual classrooms, library or computer lab. Yeah, and we're a big proponent how good point where you know trying to use these type of coding robots, especially Marty in other disciplines too, so that um, you know you can share these in a class, you know, within a school or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we find that is the best use of these type of things because since you know you can find out and create different scenarios in English, history, et cetera, beyond math and some of the typical STEM uh, type skills area. What happens um, when Marty walks off the table? Yeah. So Marty does come pre-assembled now. I just wanted to, to stress that even though it it can be taken apart and put back together, it, it does come pre-assembled when you purchase Marty. Uh, when Marty falls off the table, Marty survives and you pick him back up and go to work. <laughs> um, in, in the event that, that something does happen, it is covered under the two-year warranty. And, and so we can easily replace a, a server or something like that. Um, the, the plastic, frankly, is really high quality plastic. I've not even seen any broken plastic before. Um, well, I take that back. There's an exception. It got run over by a FedEx truck and I have the pictures wow. to prove it. And uh, that did break poor little Marty. Oh dear is right. Uh, that was in Canada. Well, that, that's unfortunate that Marty was out on the road, though, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, we we so can for, also for, attest for, that. Yeah, you're going, I'm sorry. For, for middle school students, we, we do provide the full instructions about how to build it. So if you do want to disassemble it and have the students put it together, there are detailed step-by-step -step instructions about how to do that. And it does come, each Marty comes with a little extra bag of screws and nuts and bolts. Uh, so e each Marty has a little bag of extra goodies in case you the kids get adventurous and you need to to replace a screw. Are they standard screws? Yes. Cool. Other questions out there? We have not seen any returns uh, of Marty's, and we have not seen any broken pieces yet, um, knock on wood. So we haven't had a FedEx truck run over or anything, or a GPS truck. So. Um, any other questions? If not, um, oh, the video had glimpses of a competition. Where can we see more information about that? Do you have any competitions? Uh, we don't have our own competition. What I typically tell schools is that this is more targeted at the age as a, a feeder program into the other kind of wheeled robot competitions. And so if you want to get younger kids excited about robots and get them ready for some of the more advanced competition, this is a good way to, to start. I, I think some schools have done their own kind of individual competitions between classes, maybe an obstacle course or something like that. Cool, great. Is that, I mean, if whoever asked that, if that or anyone in general, if you think that's something that's more important in the U.S., um, please let me know, and and you know we can look into that a little bit more. I, I'm 
I'm a little on the fence about competitions. I mean, typically girls aren't, aren't as interested in competitions at this age. And I'd rather have them enjoy Marty and, and use Marty to, to solve an environmental problem or a real world problem versus trying to compete against other students typically. But you know, I, I, I would yield to the educators about what works best. In, in yeah, we've class. seen a lot of people who've done it themselves in the, um, you know, in their, in their school, whether it's like, you know, using them for, you know, through a maze or something like that yeah. and, and trying to see how the kids go through that. Um, so, um, so there are different ways to kind of do it. And I, and I do, so, do see some of the uh, feedback yeah, like different ways to do There's design. a comment about yeah. you do a challenge instead of a competition. And Correct. So we've yeah, seen that. that. That's a little yeah. bit where I'd, I'd prefer to head. Yeah, there, there are a lot of programs we've seen, um, you know, different or after school programs and things like that that have been targeted with girls with robotics and stuff like that. I was actually talking today to Procter and Gamble has a local factory here in um, in the Boston area, and they're doing something too with a, a boys club and girls club focused with really girls with robots. So, um, which is good to see. So. But I do agree, challenges are the way to go. Because I think uh, we did see someone take a, a, another robot and they challenged the kids that, you know, everybody has the Disney parade, right? Yeah. And so what they did is they created a, a maze on the floor with blue tape, right? And, you know, kind of like a road. And then they, they challenged the kids to create a, you know, a float for the event using the robot to pull it along and stuff like that. So there's different ways to kind of get this. So. Um, and Laura, Lori, we're, we're on board exactly with um, encouraging more um, girls to get involved with robotics, coding, and STEM skills. Um, I had the privilege of sitting in at, at, at Harvard Graduate School of Education, uh, uh, Professor Didi, and his view on it is that the earlier we get to, you know, girls, um, the better it is. And so mm -hmm. the fact that this is a product that can be used across elementary is just fantastic, so, which is cool to see. So in closing, what we wanted to just do is offer up one more thing. We mentioned a raffle. So what I wanted to do is just share um, that um, thanks to the generosity of Marty, the, the Marty team. Um, hold on one second. I got to get this right with all these things. Um, Hal has agreed to provide one person on today's webinar, a Marty V2 robot. Okay, so what it would be is you, yeah, a single <laughs> unit. So if you send an email to Palo, P A L O, at edgeporium.com, include your name, your title, your school name, address, phone, and email. And the most important thing is how you would specifically use the Marty robot. So this isn't going to be a first in, first out. It's going to be tell us how you would use it um and uh in your school environment so that uh people can see it play with it and understand the technology because we think it's a great product so uh once again email to palo at edgeporium.com include name title school name address phone and email and the most important thing how you would use it so um, well, I'll leave this up for a couple of minutes. I did want to see if there's any other last minute questions. If not, I want to thank Hal for his time today. We appreciate him joining today. Um, and most importantly, we want to thank you, the teachers, the educators for attending today. We know it's uh, for some of you it might be vacation for others. Um, it's clearly, you know, an investment of your time, which we do appreciate. And um, we do want to thank you very much for attending today. So once again, we will send out a copy of everything. Give us a day or two as we put together to get the video and all the slides and stuff like that. And we'll send that out. All right. Yeah. I love once everyone's again. attention and, and focus and, and questions. It really makes it better when, when we're interactive like that. So I really appreciate your, your time and attention today. Great. And, and also to House Point, if you have any other additional questions, feel free to reach out and uh, we'll make sure that we answer those. Okay. Thank you very much for your time today. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.